Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve, and in this video, we'll be looking at the second update on the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, NEVI for short, and seeing how far the states have come since our last update in April. Which states are leading, which states are lagging, we'll try and cover all of that in this one at the start of June in 2024. Let's go. So if you missed the first video, it's uh, linked down below in the description and the comments and probably worth checking out because it will give you a little bit of background to the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, the funding and the various uh, stages that states can get to from requests for proposal to awarding and all the way through to construction and activation of stations. A little bit of uh, a lack of action on the latter and certainly some complaining about slow progress, but uh, this is a good one to jump in, get the reality on the ground. So let's take a look at the breakdown of where states are at and how far we've progressed in the last month or so. So I think we started off with positives last time. Let's start with the laggards in this case. I know folks had asked for a map and visualization of which states were lagging behind, hadn't even got their uh, proposals in yet and made any awards. So we'll start there for this video. So at the time of recording, there are 14 states and uh, also Puerto Rico that have not progressed to the RFP stage. That's request for proposals, that's having active solicitations to have folks apply for sites and funding under the NEVI program program at which point they would eventually close those rounds of funding and award sites and contracts to go and uh, get planned and built. So right back there at the start, there's this group of states which is actually more diverse than you might think. In some cases, there are states who really seem to have very little interest or certainly very little haste at least in uh, installing EV fast charging. That could be the likes of Wyoming because the utilization is going to be so low. That's more based on what's in the state and how many vehicles as we'll get onto, not so much travelers coming through the state, which is what a lot of this first round NEVI funding is for. But there are also some others in there that may surprise you. So in terms of these states, you can see there's a mixed bag. First of all, obviously, we've got your Wyoming's, West Virginia's, uh, some of these states, maybe in South Dakota as well, to a lesser extent, that have this yeah. natural inclination to not progress as fast with electric vehicles, partially because of their location. They're in a place that is probably going to be less attractive for some electric vehicles. There may be truck drivers who need to go further need to have towing, a um, bunch of different use cases, but in any case, also it's very small uptake in the market. Wyoming's notable, as I say, because they have categorically come out and say it's not worth us doing the RFP at the moment because there's just not going to be the utilization. It's also worth remembering it's a really small state. It ranks last in terms of uh, population. It's just over about half a million people there. And in terms of vehicle sales, you're also talking very few. Last year, it was uh, in 2023, about 29,000 new vehicle sales. So although there are very few electric vehicles sold in those states, there's also very few vehicles sold at all. Even down in Rhode Island, you've got more than a million people and that's a state that's uh, going to be on our kind of front runners list even despite the size they obviously have a more of a motivation to get ev charging in the ground but you can see to an extent why wyoming is lagging behind there and maybe has made that decision although it is going to come back to bite them i think as we'll cover here but then you also look at states like uh, washington new jersey all in these kind of areas where other states near them have gone ahead and started to accelerate that but those are states that we can confidently say are going to to move forward. Maybe they've had administrative delays, maybe they've wanted to take their time and make sure they get it right to identify the routes that really need charging and which locations they're going to prioritize. But in any case, you can see the dissection there of states that are not going to be inclined towards electrification and focusing on EV charging, and those who really will want to forge forward and probably want to pick up the baton and really start running with it when they get a chance here as the request for proposals go in. But if you start to think of it as a patchwork of the United States and maybe Wyoming as a whole, West Virginia as a whole, these are gonna be kind of locations where it's gonna be easy enough to just not go to those locations for the gap time for the period that they choose to lag on DC fast charging. So if we move on to the next phase, that's where it starts to get a little more interesting. It's uh, the states that have the solicitations process open and RFPs coming in from parties who are interested in installing charging and receiving those NEVI funds. In this group, you start to get some very big players. You've got California, Arizona, 
uh, Massachusetts, my home state here, Minnesota, North Carolina. So some fairly uh, significant players in markets where EVs are taking off and EV infrastructure is a focus. You can see all of those locations, California, of course, being the market leader and having a really good head start on a lot of charging. Um, and then Massachusetts being a popular state for electric vehicles. North Carolina being home to a lot of investment for battery and electric vehicle manufacturing. And a lot of places here which are going to be significant for announcements so when they finally do their awards and california and massachusetts are both very close here then we should get some significant progress from them with those round one awards there are some details trickling out about california's initial awards for its round one solicitation that was expected uh, within q2 so we're right in the last month here in june and i'll put up on the screen what we've got for those if anything else has come out i know massachusetts is one folks are watching as well i'll pop that up in the interstitial here between the rfp process and who has actually made awards but you can see it's a moving target obviously as we get more and more states announcing they move into the bucket of having awarded funding and the process moving to where is it going to be built and how quickly can they get it in the ground so we move into a much more physical on the ground progress is happening phase at that point so as we move up through the process of uh, states that have actually awarded NEVI funding, it gets to a much nicer solid list of uh, around half of the states have done that. So obviously you get your deep District of Columbia and then Puerto Rico, so maybe the percentages aren't exact. But in terms of the states that have already awarded round funding or further than that, then we've got uh, Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Kansas, Alaska, Virginia, Indiana, Utah, Tennessee, Georgia, Arkansas, and Colorado. From those, plus the ones that do have stuff under construction or open already. And worth noting that some of these that have the awards already out have been out there for a long time. You've got Texas, which was awarded last year. Utah has been out there for since 2023. Same with Colorado. So there are some states here, some of them have more announced in Q1 2024, but this puts a lot of sites on the board. So then a bunch under construction, but there's a whole swathe there beyond that that aren't quite under construction yet, or we don't necessarily know that they're under construction because we don't have site visits but which are more than 500 sites now that are awarded have been located and that's where you start to get an idea of really that we are on the verge now of actually starting to make a lot of progress for all the headlines of only six states have stations this is about to change very very quickly with these sites awarded and construction season underway so then moving on to the positive end, although it has been spun in various negative ways, in terms of states with NEVI sites under construction, we have eight there, which is essentially adding Kentucky and Rhode Island to your six states that have sites open already. Those sites that have activated NEVI funded stations are New York with three, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Hawaii, Vermont, and Maine, all at the time of recording with one, although there's a large number that's in double digits of the Ohio Round 1 awards about to potentially go live or certainly at very advanced stages of construction. But there you see with those eight sites, that's about 16% of the uh, states there so solid amount i mean we want to really get past closer to that half of the country having sites uh, under construction certainly with so many sites awarded now more than 500 as i say you'll really want to see progress as the warmer months are here and you get longer days to be able to enable construction but solid start and we have those under construction sites to really start burgeoning the numbers get into 10 20 30 sites open before we hopefully finish summer here and when we talk about that construction a lot of it is how happening here in New England. Now in the interim since the last update we had the site open up in Vermont. I'm thinking the uh, site in Maine for Rockland was already open when I recorded the update, the first one. But in any case, I visited the uh, site up in Rockland, Maine for Tesla's first Nevi Award. You can see that separately on the channel here. And then not too long after that, Vermont opened a expanded site in Bradford, Vermont which is kind of on the border with New Hampshire. So you've got a lot of these New England states now with Maine and Vermont both having locations, New Hampshire having made its awards, Massachusetts and Connecticut still the laggards in that sense with uh, the RFP is still open and uh, about to be announced later this year, hopefully. But you see a lot of activity there, New York as well, and then over to Ohio, where there's this big 
lots of uh, stations, most of them Pilot Flying J with a couple of uh, Francis Energy sites in there as well. Those being about 10 to 12 sites that are about to be open or in the later stages of construction. You also have in Richmond, Kentucky, the first Circle K site that won awards. Uh, that should be up anytime soon. That's going to be the first ABB charges in the ground and the first Circle K site that has opened up with Nevi funding. And then you have Rhode Island, which is going to be one of these that has an expanded site as the site in Bradford, Vermont was. Uh, these are stations I've visited actually down in Rhode Island when they have uh, the location at a park and ride which is going to be interesting to see the amenities there. But the existing installs have been two CPE 250s, and I don't believe they're paired even, so you get a very limited 62.5 kilowatts from those at best. But then they've gone and uh, expanded those sites, obviously park and ride, basically a big parking lot right off the interstate. So in terms of location, perfect for Nevi. Although again, the amenities may be in question there. But they have uh, used the ChargePoint Express units, so putting in two of those with the two active handles which are capable of at the very least 150 kilowatts maybe they'll spec them up to 200 kilowatts as the ones up in Maine have done that were non nevi sites more just for the service plazas but it's uh, it's interesting again that you're getting these sites as in New York and as in Vermont where they've kind of taken an existing site said that's a good location but it doesn't really meet nevi spec and certainly has older equipment which is not gonna do the job for travel and they up use the nevi funds to upgrade those sites to get them into a better state for long distance travel. So the Rhode Island ones will be interesting. I'll try and get up to Vermont at some point this summer to look at the Brett site in Bradford. And then we'll also be able to take a look at some of the proposed locations in New Hampshire, which have been put on the map in some pretty interesting places. Certainly accessing the White Mountains has been a long complaint of mine other than using level two charging uh, to get up there and stay around. So it's gonna be good to have fast charging in those areas. Thanks primarily to the Nevi funds. So as I say, one of the dangers of recording in uh, times where a lot of these announcements are happening is that things can overflow. And before I get the video edited and posted, other things have happened and the numbers have changed. So be sure to check your local state and uh, any of the resources down below in the video description and comments in case anything has changed, I'll update it there. Otherwise, we'll catch them up in the third Nevi update, which will be for July now. So stay tuned for that. Check out the first Nevi update. If you have any Nevi related uh, questions, comments, things you'd like me track certainly put them down in the comments love to hear that and i'll be happy to add them to future updates thanks for watching and see you in the next one cheers